Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, it's my first time in Sydney, and I think it's an amazing city. And I hope it's not my last time here. <laughs> um, I'm, I want to talk um, a little bit about the, our Museum Island project in Berlin. Um, it, David Pitchford asked me to center the talk around that. And I'm also showing um, two more projects which we um, are still working on in, in China. One being in Shanghai, um, the restoration of colonial buildings and one uh, being um, in Hangzhou, that's two hours drive from Shanghai, being um, the conversion of old factory buildings. Um, the, I think I'm, I'm invited here to talk about building. We, we are about uh, in the section of um, built architecture, and I want to talk to you a bit about um, how to deal with uh, historic fabric, um, specifically. Um, so, uh, the, you all know um, Berlin was a divided city until um, 18, uh, 1989, that's uh, 25 years ago. Um, and uh, just last week there were the celebrations that of the um, turn, uh, coming down of the Berlin Wall 25 years ago. Um, and because of uh, the divided city, um, also the museum collections were divided into um, the western part, which is on the left, and the um, eastern part of the city. Um, the, the project I'm talking about is, is here. It's, uh, it's the historic uh, center of Berlin. And uh, after the wall came down, um, the, the state museums decided to bring back um, all the archaeological collections back into the historic center. Um, the, the museum island is, um, consists out of uh, five buildings. One, one is the famous Altus Museum by Schinkel. That was the first one built in 1825, um, opposite the castle, which is being be rebuilt at the moment. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the dome. And uh, our, our project started with a competition for the so-called Neues Museum uh, in Berlin, which was an extension to the old Museum of Schenkel. Um, the island um, is a good example of um, unfinished uh, master plans. Um, it was... Uh, first thought as an acropolis for, um, for the arts. Um, this, is, this is a sketch actually by Friedrich IV, the, the former king. Um, and he commissioned um, a student of uh, Stühler to do um, a master plan for the, for the whole museum island. This was the original master plan, which was never completed. Um, it's interesting because uh, the Museum Island um, has been in continuous discussion and um, master planning uh, exercises since 1840. And, um, and now we are in 2014, so I think uh, it took almost 200 years uh, to complete this project. Um, this is the, the front of the Neues Museum. That's the Neues Museum. That's the Old National Gallery. That's the only uh, part of the master plan that has been um, successfully uh, completed by um, Stühler. This is the um, Neues Museum today. <clears throat> that's, the, that's the main entrance of the building, how it looks today. Um, and here you can see the, the, how the museum sits in the overall uh, master plan. And this is, this is the so-called James Simon Gallery, which um, we are building at the moment. It's in construction. It's coming out of the ground now. 
um, and it will be used for a temporary exhibition and it will also act as the main entrance for the museum island. I will come back later to that. That's, uh, that's, that's an image, how it uh, will look. Um, as you all know, uh, Berlin was um, almost completely destroyed during the war. Um, and when we were invited to do the competition uh, for the Neuss Museum, the building looked like that. Um, it, was in, it was bombed twice and it was left as a ruin um, for more than 50 years. So maybe that's a little bit comparable to the power station discussion, but um, this building was destroyed in a very, uh, let's say, very inconsistent way. Um, there were parts of the building completely missing and other parts were actually in a very good condition. Some of the rooms were intact as if you have left the room yesterday. So um, when we started the competition, sorry, um, and when we first visited the building, um, we realized that um, that that part of the history of the building, being a ruin, is as important as its former use as a museum. And um, everybody who has entered that building at that time uh, was so, it was so powerful, the spaces that were left, um, that nobody, at least being an architect, could imagine to not keep some of these qualities. Um, Unfortunately, um, I'm only here since two days. I, I haven't seen the power station, but I've seen some images, and um, I think uh, it's an amazing space that's there. It reminded us of um, antique, antique ruins, um, very powerful spaces. And um, when, when we first um, started the working on the building, we um, we thought that we have to put back the pieces, we have to put it back in order, in order to make it work as a building. Um, and, but we, we want to do it in a way that the, um, not trying to recreate the original, but to, to make sense out of the fragments that were left and um, putting it back into one museum and of course adapting it to um, modern museum standards. So um, this, I think the, this is a quite um, understandable approach, but uh, that's, it's, it's quite common when you're dealing with, uh, with paintings or so, you're not trying to, to repaint uh, what, uh, what's not there anymore. Um, but there are examples of uh, complete uh, reconstruction, for instance, uh, this is the famous so-called Frauenkirche in uh, Dresden. And this uh, it has been discussed in a very controversial way. It was a, it's a complete reconstruction. And um, if you see it today, you don't know um, if it's old or new. Um, so the challenge was really um, to, um, to put it back together. I show you some... Uh, design drawings. This is the plan. In red you can see the, the pieces that we added to the building in black. Um, the, what has uh, left has remained. Um, so when we, when we um, talk about how to approach historic fabric, um, I think this is an extreme case, but what we are trying to do is to put back the building, but um, to, uh, to create a kind of, um, when you're far away, you understand the building it, as a whole, but when you're coming closer, you, uh, you understand what's old and what's new. So instead of creating a strong contrast, it's uh, something that um, as you approach, you understand it better. And in order um, to do that, um, 
I show you, this is the, the facade of the building. You can see the new facade and the old facade next to it. In order to do so, we, um, we um, really followed the, the Carter of uh, Venice, which is, uh, is, uh, is um, an accepted way of approaching historic fabric. So we photographed all the surfaces of the building, and then step by step in Photoshop, we tested how much do you actually need in terms of restoration to not make the destruction the primary thing you see, but to make, to, to make the room complete, but still see that it has been uh, destroyed. So um, it was really um, um, a step-by-step -step approach, and it was a very careful looking at what was left over and what, what's, what was there. Um, the, the building was um, made a World Heritage Site uh, in 1998 by the UNESCO. So um, everybody was very nervous that we are not doing a reconstruction of the building. And um, the way um, I think was quite remarkable in this stage, and I have to say, as I'm German, but as, as a foreign architect, um, we had the advantage of being outsiders. There were big fights going on between the museums, the restoration department, and all sorts of people. Um, the, the museums wanted to have a very a new, um, very attractive, big gesture. The restoration department um, was very much on our side. Um, but what, um, what was quite remarkable is that because of the strong remains of the building, we could engage all the people involved much more than you, you would usually do with an architectural project. Usually as an architect you're quite alone arguing for quality. Uh, in this case, um, the building was a little bit like a patient and everybody knew it, he had to be um, healed somehow. So there was a very um, a conspiracy that was created around this project. So I take you through some of the steps of restoration. For instance, in this space, you can see some pieces of the room were missing. So we had to really study how to rebuild these old vaults. <clears throat> it's a so-called flat dome room. And this is how it looks finished. The building had, uh, is also very remarkable for its construction. Um, it, was, it used uh, very innovative um, lightweight constructions uh, by Stühler. Mm. And the most controversial space was the main stair hall in the center of the building, which was almost completely destroyed and was an incredible, uh, powerful space. Um, and when, when, when we showed our proposal to the public, um, there was, uh, and this is how it looked before, this, this was, I'm going back, this was our first proposal, um, there were big protests going on in front of the building. Um, people sitting there all night with candles, um, fighting for the complete reconstruction of the, of the stair hall. Um, but um, in the end, um, we, we, um, we, we had to, because, because it was such a complicated project, we had to explain it so, so often. Um, and we had, we had such a... Um, yeah, let's say we, we were so convinced of our approach and the, uh, the conservation department and the, the museums were so convinced that in the end um, that we, we did what we had planned despite all the protests. Um, and in, when the building opened, the 
Berliners came in thousands um, to, to see the completed buildings without the exhibition, just to see what we have done to the building. Um, so I think uh, this is a good example of what a building can do without any program. I, um, so I'm, I'm an architect and I think this, um, this power station, just as a building, is a big opportunity to create a fantastic space that can be used in, in very different ways. Um, This is a quote by, by David. Um, the ruin created, as ruins do, uh, another relation between architecture and us. And the manner by which we dealt with the ruin maintained throughout the building original material, modified material, and new interventions, a dominant physical atmosphere which has created a relationship between the visitor and the building. And I think that is, that is the success um, of the Neues Museum. This is how the just some images of the finished building. One of the spaces um, is this is the so called uh, Egyptian courtyard where we did a bigger intervention. I have to go a bit quicker, I'm sorry. I'm, and this intervention was based on this um, former use of the courtyard. It, that, that there was um, an exhibition of an old Greek temple, and we used that structure. Um, there's a second courtyard, which is the Greek courtyard, which is being used for conferences and meetings. Now, um, I want to come back a little bit to the master plan. Um, when we started to work on, the, on this uh, remarkable project, we, um, we realized very quickly that um, the plans, by the, because it is in the central location of the island, that this building is too fragile to um, become the main entrance for the museum island. So um, when we started to work on that, we, um, we immediately um, realized that there is a need for a master plan. Um, because the expectations for visitors, and now there are, I think, more than three million per year, um, were so high that we needed an additional building to cope with that. Um, also, because of the many unrealized master plans, these, um, all these buildings, they don't center around uh, a, a central square, so they all look in different directions. They all have their own entrances. So um, the visitors, they, they know, when you go to the museum island, you, you, it's, it's quite likely that you are asked, uh, where is this museum, where is that museum? Because you don't know really where you are. So there was a need for orientation, but there was also a need uh, to connect all the historic buildings. Um, that's a section model showing um, the so-called archaeological promenade, which connects all the courtyards of the um, existing buildings. And um, when we started, we formed a, a group of architects. Um, the, the, there were five architects involved, each of them commissioned for one of the buildings, and we developed this master plan together. That's the important sketch of the so-called archaeological promenade connecting to the new entrance of the museum island. That's the connection. Um, most of the visitors only see the uh, Pergamon Museum, so there was, um, in order to, to maintain the historic entrances um, and to separate group visitors from individual visitors, um, we um, invented this so-called main tour, which is only 30 minutes seeing the most important bits of the island. Um, and our project for the new entrance is continuing this idea um, of the colonnades that already wrap around the eastern part of the museum island. 
And it also uh, picks up on one of the never realized master plans by uh, Alfred Messel to extend uh, the Pergamon Museum to the right. Um, and this is our design for the new entrance, which allows the Neues Museum to, to, um, yeah, to, to stay a little bit untouched. And to engage the public, um, we had a series of exhibitions in the ruin. Um, we made, uh, there was, uh, the whole planning process took about five years, and the construction time was also five years, so it was a long process. And um, we opened up the ruin as often as we could and invited all the, um, the citizens to see this amazing space. So this is an image of the exhibition about the master plan for the Museum Island. And um, we also had famous visitors coming. <coughs> mm. So before ending, um, I just wanted to say that um, our office has learned so much from dealing with that project that we keep um, of course, we, we're doing all sorts of projects, but I'm just showing um, some of them relevant with historic fabric. So this, for instance, is uh, in Shanghai, and um, we, we were commissioned for the uh, restoration of um, this whole row of uh, colonial buildings from the same time period, built between 1840 and 1930, same time period as Noyes Museum. Um, that also have been derelict for, for a, a very, very long time. Um, all the buildings were mainly built by um, the British for cultural and religious uh, institutions at the time. And um, we used um, the same approach. Um, I'll just show you, this is how, how the buildings, the conditions the buildings were in when we, when we started to work with them. Just show you some projects of before and after. So um, there has been a lot of um, structural work inside the buildings, which you don't see. Um, but really, um, when, you, when you see the buildings today, you, you, you don't realize an architect has worked on it. And that was exactly our aim, that they look natural in a way that they have aged in a, in a natural way. <laughs> That's always before and after, obviously. So I, I guess what I want to say and um, what I hope um, can be done with the power station is to really look at what's there and to really keep the, the parts that are valuable um, and not come with just with a big idea, um, but really look in more detail, do a very proper survey of the building um, and replace the parts that need to be replaced, adapt the part that need to be adapted, but not ruin the, um, the, the character um, of the place. And I think this project is quite successful. We, we, we were teaching um, Chinese workers how to deal with uh, <laughs> this construction site and how to, how to replace old bricks or how to replace this, uh, for instance, this plaster. It's a very special plaster uh, that only exists in Shanghai. Um, this is maybe worth mentioning. This is the um, Royal Asiatic uh, Society Museum. It was the very first museum in China, and um, it's one of these buildings, and we have converted it. It's a beautiful, small Art Deco building, and it's, ha it's now been used as a museum for modern art. And um, we have done uh, as little as possible. That's an exhibition by Tsai Guochen, the first exhibition. We tried to keep as much as possible of the atmosphere. And... Um, 
the third project I'm going to show is, I only have four minutes, so <laughs> it's in Hangzhou. Hangzhou is a city of uh, seven million people, two hours drive from Shanghai, and it has uh, this huge industrial areas in the, in the city centers, which are very similar to the building we're in at the moment. And uh, we are working since two years and we're still in concept design for the conversion of these three huge steel factory halls. And the story is very similar, and I think this, this shows very well how flexible um, these old factories are. And even, even if, you, if, you, if you're sweating a little bit <laughs> because you can't really air condition them, um, they, they can be used in, in loads of different ways. And just to give you an, a little bit of an idea of scale, um, this is the Museum Island in Berlin, and above in the same scale, the three factory halls. And the biggest one is the size of the Peter's Dome in Rome. It's absolutely huge. I think it's even bigger than, than the power station here, the, the main space. So, um, again, I think the strategy we, we are trying to do is uh, deal with these spaces as if they were, you know, a cathedral. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cathedral of the industrial times and, and they're just as amazing. And, and um, the, the qualities they have is, they have this, um, this wasted space which nobody would build today. The most, most of the new space we're building is, is programmed space, but these spaces, they are so special because they have this, this abundance of space. So, um, looking at these projects, we, the main question is how do you fit program? Um, and in this case, we were arguing and we, we successfully argued that you have to really condense the program and not put it, disperse it in the space, but concentrate it so that you can keep some of the qualities such like the turbine hall or so in, in, the, in the power station. Um, so this project is a mixed use project um, and the buildings will be converted into, uh, one, one of the halls will be a, a dance and um, a theater space uh, one will be a hotel, so we're using the old factories as a kind of um, uh, garden entrance to the to the hotel, it, um, which will be curated uh, by um, by a museum director actually. So this would be the entrance to the museum. Uh, sorry, to the hotel. <laughs> um, and we're just exploring what, what you can do with these amazing spaces. This is another hall that will be converted into a retail destination, a kind of marketplace. And then also the outside spaces, these old gantries can become um, really places for the community, places to rest. So this, this will be an alley uh, of restaurants just outside the power station. One last sentence from David because um, <laughs> he cannot be here today. Um, I always enjoy those places where the context is strong because it gives you a partner, gives you something to dialogue, the place and what that place means. So I think the questions which I ask is how do you make this balance between finding ideas in the place and giving ideas to the place? And I think this is the dialogue of architecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.